If you're just joining us for the Music Master webinar second hour, um, welcome along um, and welcome aboard. Uh, we appreciate you uh, continuing to register for these and hopefully get a better knowledge about uh, what's possible with Music Master, how to refine your skills, and become a Music Master genius. Uh, the topic today in our second hour, which you registered for, is clocks. In the third hour will be an advanced look at clocks with Joe Knapp. Next week we have rules on tap and rules, um, uh, advanced rules set up in the third hour of next week's webinar. You do need to register for that. You can do that at the website if you haven't done so already. One thing that's been uh, very exciting is many of you have registered for all of the weeks we have posted. And we will be uh, extending that uh, schedule of uh, topics very shortly. So check back on the web website for that. Um, also, the, in addition to the live presentation, we are recording these sessions. Uh, however, there are limitations with the GoToWebinar software that does not allow us to break these individual sessions up into individual hours. So if you want to download these sessions, you certainly can. They're posted on our website, but uh, you will have to download the entire three-hour segment. Uh, that's just a limitation that we cannot get around. So that is, uh, that's kind of the status on things there. Once again, um, our goal here is to familiarize you with the software if you're not a current user to uh, <clears throat> make you aware of how it works. If uh, maybe you're, uh, you're used to using some other brand uh, or you were in a previous situation and you've never used Music Master, this is an opportunity to try to teach you and give you a basic understanding. But also we have many of our existing customers online who are looking at an opportunity to advance our skills. And we certainly uh, welcome everyone um, regardless of your, your status. If you are an existing client, by the way, and you do have a question about a specific feature or subject that you see here, by all means, contact your music scheduling consultant so that we can spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time with you and, and get you up to speed on that uh, functionality. Hopefully everybody's back and uh, we can get started, so I'd like to uh, move to hour number two of our Genius uh, Workshop series. Uh, our guest speaker today is Paul Zeno, and Paul will be dealing with uh, a basic overview of Music Master clocks. If you have any questions, certainly type them in the question box, and we'll try to address them as we go or, um, or get back to you at a later date via email or telephone. Without further ado, here's Paul Zeno. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Mark has mentioned, my name is Paul Zeno. I will be taking care of this next hour. We're going to be diving into clocks and spending a good deal of time looking at what clocks can do, how you can set them up, and the overall view of how to get your clocks to work for you. So for starters, I think the best way to go about this is how do I even get into clocks? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do so in the software. The first one is via the data set menu. By clicking data set clocks, it takes you to the five various options here, including your format clocks, format lists, assignment grids, the log note text editor, and the format scheduler. And we're going to touch on each one of these as the uh, session goes on this hour. Another option is within the info bar here, which we have on the left side of the screen. Down at the bottom, we can switch to the clocks view. As you see right now, we have no clocks, but by the end of the session, we will have several. And the most obvious one is to click on the clock icon at the top of our screen. This opens up Format Clock Maintenance, where we have the tabs for format clocks, format lists, assignment grids, and the format scheduler. Again, we'll get into each of those as we go through the hour here. So for starters, let's build a new clock. To do so, we're just going to click on New right here in the Format Clock List, and we're going to give it a clock ID. The code for a clock ID can be up to two characters using numbers, symbols, and capital letters. We'll just start with Clock AA, and we're going to call it General Clock. General Clock opens up, and we have two panels here. This panel on the left side is where we do all of our editing in the clock. 
And on the right, we call this the pie view. We also have a category usage and element usage feature here, which we'll dive into here in just a few moments. Within the clock, you have several different items within it. The position, this is just a counter one through whatever the last number is of the final element in your clock. Start time is automatically determined within the clock based on the run lengths of each element that you schedule. The lengths are determined based on the mean time within the category that's being scheduled in that position or categories. Element type is where we get into the business. Element type here we're going to start with is a fixed position. Basically a fixed position just goes to the category or categories selected, and, or just the category selected, and takes whatever is the next item in the rotation of that category. So for starters, we're just going to take a category A, one of our heavy currents. And you'll notice it automatically populates the pie view on the right. I'm also going to take a fixed position from our medium currents here. And one from our light currents. Simply using the pull down menu in the element type and then the pull down menu within the category list. So we have our three currents scheduled in the hour. I also want to schedule some recurrents. So we'll use the pull down list here again, go to fixed, and this time we'll select our recurrence category. Now instead of doing that three more times, because I ultimately want four recurrents in this hour, I'm just going to clone this element. And there's two ways to do that. The first one is to click on the element, then right click it, and go to clone element. That just simply doubles what we already had there. Or we can use the clone element icon in the available toolbar here within the clock. Like I said, I want four of these total, so I'll just click it one more time, and now we have our four recurrents. I also want to schedule a couple of primary golds. And another way to add in a fixed position is to simply click and drag the category from the info bar on the left and drop it into the clock. And to do that, we'll just click primary gold, drag it across. If I wanted to insert that element, the fixed primary gold item, you see how we have the solid red line between the two recurrents? That would be an insertion as opposed to the red box now around the recurrent position, which would be a replace of the recurrent. I'm just going to drop that in there and clone it a couple times. I want a couple secondary golds in this hour. Drag it, drop it in there, clone it, and one tertiary gold. And we see we've got a representation here. And by design, I've colored my currents in blues, my recurrents pinks, and then various oranges for my gold categories. That way I can see the distribution of how those things are going to hit the various quarter hours throughout the clock. Now another thing that you're going to put in clocks very commonly is going to be information either for your jock or for your automation system. We do that via log notes. So let's start by inserting a log note up here at the very top of the hour. We'll just right click on heavy currents and insert an element. And you can see we have a blank line there. We'll use the pull down list within the element properties to select log note. And we'll just call this a top of our legal identification. We'll indicate a length. This is the amount of runtime you want to allot to this element within the Music Master clock. And we have a log note there for our top of our legal ID. I also want to drop in some liners into this hour. So let's just drag and drop in a couple of liners. Just kind of dropping them willy-nilly at this point. And I know I need to have some talk breaks in here. So I'm going to have a talk break roughly here. Just insert. And again, I'll use a log note to do that. And we'll allocate 15 seconds for that. I want to do another talk break. This time I'm going to modify it. I cloned it. Now we'll just double click on it. This is going to be going into a commercial break. I want the jock to have a little bit longer time there, so I'll give him 30 seconds. I know I'm going to have three commercial breaks, so I'm going to need three talk breaks of 30 seconds. So I'll clone that a couple times and pull those down. To drag and drop within a clock, just simply click the item on the left-hand side in the gray pointer column. That's the gray boxes with the pointers in it. Drag it and drop it where you'd like it. And now we'll insert a commercial break. Right click on the element, go to insert. Again, we're going to use a log note position at this point. 
let's say you're using an automation system, you need to tell automation what's happening here. We'll assume you're using Scott Studio. So let's write in the Scott Studio syntax for a commercial break. And I'll actually type it incorrectly this time. Basically, I've indicated this is the 20 after stop set, and it's going to allot five minutes in the Scott system. Thus, I'm also going to allot five minutes for length in Music Master. And being that this is the end of a music sweep, we'll indicate it as a sweep marker. Click OK, and we have our commercial break in there. If you're using a different automation system, your syntax would be different depending on what automation you're using. We'll throw in a couple more of those. Notice we have an auto-complete function here in Music Master. It automatically knows what we're typing, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to make a quick adjustment. Instead of the 20 stops, it will call this a 35. Again, we'll make it five minutes, and it's the end of a sweep. And we're going to do one more of those right around here. And we'll call this the 50 stop set. Sweep markers noted with the S stop sign element here in the sweep marker column. And all that's telling us is that that's the end of a music sweep. Now let's get our music separated throughout here so that we have things evenly distributed. And to do that, we can just click and drag these items and drop them where we would like them within our clock. We'll move a current there. Let's move our heavy current around there. We'll recurrent up to the top. You see, this actually moves around pretty quickly and pretty painlessly. And we can keep moving this until we get things separated. So now we have a current roughly every 20 minutes. We've got our gold separated fairly. We've got to move a couple of these around a little bit. Recurrents are hitting each of the quarter hours. I want to move this one just a little bit. I'm going to double click that gray pointer box and then double click on the one I want to make the swap with. There we go move this liner up here. And then we've got our basic clock, all built and ready to roll. When we're all done building the clock, we click the little floppy disk save icon in the upper left corner. And now that clock has been saved. Within our pie view, we have a variety of things to show you. As you already see the distribution, the blue in the center indicates it comes from a music category or non-music category. The green indicates that's a log note element, and then each color on the outer edge indicates what category it came from. We can switch to the category usage button, or tab, and it breaks it down for us so that we can see what we've actually scheduled. We have in fixed positions, one each of our currents, four recurrents, three primary gold, and so on. We also have four liners. Element usage is going to break down the various element types we have within this clock. So we see we have 17 fixed positions. Those are all these with the music and non-music categories. And we have eight log note elements within this clock. Let's go ahead and let's build another clock so we can discuss some of the other common types of Music Master elements that can be found within clocks. We'll go to new again, and we'll just call this one clock AB. And we'll call this our second clock. You can name the clock whatever you would like, just so long as it means something to you, so when you go to use it, you know what you're in store for. In Music Master, let's assume you always wanted to start this hour that we're building here, this clock, with the same legal ID. Well, we have a category of top of hour IDs right here, and I want to force one of those items within that category into this first position of the hour. To do so, we have a forced element type. Now, if I knew the Music Master 
strong ID number for the ID that I want to schedule here. I could just type it in and hit OK and it would populate. Since I don't, let's search the library. This pulls up our library query. And as I already indicated, I know all of my top of our IDs are in the top category. So I select it and click OK. Now I can choose any one of these IDs that are in this category. Let's take the We Salute You top of our mark. It populates for us, and clicking OK forces that element. So every time we schedule it using this clock, it will start with song ID 2072, which is the We Salute You top of our ID. Some people like to use manual positions in their clocks, which Music Master will leave as an unscheduled position when you run the auto scheduler. Common use for a manual position uh, that I've seen with Music Master users would be if they're scheduling a syndicated show, let's say Alice Cooper at night, and they want to include the songs that Alice plays in his show in their music log for testing purposes and for separation and so on, even though they're not actually playing it out of their automation, they're just running the syndication from Alice Cooper. So in that case, they would just throw in some manual positions into the clock from whatever category they so choose. Then when it comes time and they get the log from Alice Cooper, they just manually go into the log and enter the information that they want in that position. So if Alice was playing a song by Alice Cooper, you would just type in the Alice Cooper song in that position within your schedule editor because nothing was auto-scheduled there. It was left manual. Or we could manually just double-click on that position in the schedule editor to populate it based out of what's in that G3 category. Let's say you've got a handful of categories, and you don't care which one gets scheduled. You just want one of them to get plotted randomly. That's why we have what's called a random position. We're going to randomly allow Music Master to schedule from our three gold categories, G1, 2, and 3. So Music Master will go through its auto-schedule process, and as it's building the template for the day based on the clocks assigned, it'll say, let's schedule a G2 in that position today. If it can't find a G2 in that case, it's going to leave that position unscheduled. However, you also have the opportunity to say, let's try the G1, and if we can't, then try G2, and then G3, kind of a fallback position. We call those in Music Master, we call those items combos. Combo position lets you choose multiple categories, and right now we're set up to allow it to schedule any song in that category within the depth that passes the unbreakable rules. If it can't find a song at this point in the first category tested that passes the unbreakables, it'll drop down to the second category and then the third and so on. The order in which it schedules those categories is based on your schedule properties, which is your pass list or pass order within Music Master. And to show that to you quickly, we'll just go to Data Set, Schedule, Schedule Properties. This is the order in which Music Master in this database is scheduling. It's going in the same order coincidentally as what's appearing in our info bar. So it will schedule from G1s in this position for the combo. It'll schedule a G1, and if it can't find one that passes the unbreakable rules, it'll drop down to the G2. If it still can't find a song within the available depth, which in this case is 40% of 98 slots, it'll drop down to the G3. If it still can't, then it would leave the position unscheduled, allowing you, the Music Master Schedule Editor person, to go ahead and manually fill in that position on your own during editing. Another cool feature would be using a proportional position. Proportional positions allow you to set up a ratio of category to category. You can have as many in that proportional position as you would like, where we could say we want a one to one to one ratio. So each one of these gets a third of the place. Or we could say we want a three to two to one ratio. So when we come to schedule this proportional position in the clock, half the time it's going to come from a primary gold category, a third of the time from secondary gold, and one-sixth of the time from our tertiary gold category. Doesn't mean that we're going to get three primaries, then two secondaries, then one tertiary. It means that over the course of time, we'll get this ratio or proportion. Could get a handful of secondaries before we ever see a primary. Could get a couple of tertiaries before we see a primary. But over the course of time, you'll get the proportion that you've requested in that position. Cool way to use proportional positions in addition to doing that, where you can get your, your spice category to get, just kind of flavor things a little bit. 
what I see commonly is Music Master users will have a proportional position that they set to go between two categories, for example. A 50-50 mix between our recurrence and our primary goals. But here we are a week or two before Christmas. We want to start to gradually introduce our Christmas category as well. So we come in here to Christmas, and if we plug in a 2, now we're going to get half of this position to schedule as Christmas, and the other half will be split between recurrence and primary goals. Then the week right before Christmas, we increase this to maybe 5 to 1 to 1. And then the week of Christmas, we change it entirely from proportional to just a fixed position for Christmas. We didn't save that position. I just canceled out of it. Another feature used, uh, sometimes more often than others, would be traffic merge. Now, traffic merge is sometimes needed based on your automation system. And what traffic merge does is it looks out to the traffic log for a specific date, you know, the date that you're scheduling, and grabs the traffic file and imports the spots into Music Master so that you can edit for time based on the time of your commercial break in addition to all of your music. It helps you get a more accurate log. Some automation systems require that you use traffic merge positions uh, and do your merge in Music Master and then send a file from Music Master that contains everything, music and commercials. Other automation systems don't want it at all. They want to do the merge on their own, so they have their own merge software, like Scott Studios has SS32, Audio Vault has AV Scheduler, and so on. Depending on your automation system may determine whether or not you want to use traffic merge. The way you would set that up is you'd have a traffic merge definition file built by your music scheduling consultant, or if you're feeling handy, you can go about building it on your own via the help section. You can get advice on how to do that. Come in here and schedule a traffic position. What we're telling it here is to go to that traffic log and capture the commercials that are scheduled within the traffic log between time A and time B. Let's say time A is going to be 20 after, and time B is 25 after. So now any spot scheduled in this hour that has a start time of between 20 and 25 will be merged into this traffic position. Default run length is how much time we want to allot for it in Music Master, and then we'll set it as a sweep marker as well because it's the end of a, of a music sweep. Traffic break codes are occasionally needed for specific automation systems. Uh, in our example here, we don't need a traffic break code. So now that position will import all the traffic scheduled between 20 and 25. And we can do another one that's going to take the traffic scheduled between 35 and 40. And yet another one for our 50 stop set. And then we simply drop our different music items in between all of this. So we have our traffic merge positions all set. Now, let's say you have a spot scheduled at 41. That spot's going to be left loose and not actually get merged because it doesn't fall within any of our merge points. You can see if you have loose spots within the schedule editor simply by right-clicking on the hour header and asking it to view the loose spots. And then if you need to make a modification on the fly, you can do so. So if we had a spot scheduled at 41, we could go to this position in the schedule editor and change it so that it would import that as well. What are some more of the basic features in a clock? Some of the other features we're going to touch on here that Joe Knapp is actually going to dive into even more so when it comes time for his session starting at 1 o'clock central. Uh, the first of which is called Saved List. We're going to build a new clock. We'll call this clock SL for Saved List. You can build a saved list or a song list when you're in library maintenance. Uh, those lists can be basically built up of whatever you want. In our case, we have a song list over here for our weekly top 10. So let's build our weekly top 10 countdown, shall we? OK. Our element type is going to be saved list. And we're going to skip over a session list, and we're going to specifically choose this week's top 10. Session list would allow us if we had a different list for every week. So we had the list for 
February 14th top 10, February 21st top 10, February 28th top 10. Then we would use session list in the clock and then dictate what session list we're going to use when we start the auto scheduler for that specific date. For our example, we're going to use the this week's top 10 list. It's our first song of the uh, hour. Let's take the first song from that list. In our situation, that's going to be song number 10 in our 10th one countdown. Now we need to build nine more positions to grab the other nine songs out of this list. So we'll use the pull down and element type again. Select Save List. This time we're going to this week's top ten and we're just going to import the next song from that list. Let's clone that element so that we have all ten songs in our clock. And there they all are. So what else are we going to need here? Well, we're going to need to include our countdown IDs so that before we play song number 10 it says this is song number 10 and so forth. Well we could force those elements into the clocks as we've already talked about forced elements. We just right click on the first item here, insert an element and I know that the forced positions are going to, when we search the library, come from our countdown intros category. And I want the number 10 for the weekly top 10 which is song ID 2565. And I'm noticing here that they're in sequential order, 2565 through 2574, which will make this a little quicker and easier. So there's our song number 10 and our weekly top 10. Right click here, insert an element. We'll change it to forced. That was 2565, so this is going to be 2566. And it grabs number 9 weekly top 10. We'll go through that again. Right click on the element you wanted to insert above. Select Insert Element. We're going to change from Fixed to Forced because we're forcing this item. This is going to be 2567. Another cool feature in Music Master, I just have to open up this other clock and then close it quickly, is the ability to drag and drop from one position to another. We're going to open up our Countdown Intros cat clock, uh, category. Here they all are. If I come up here to Window and Tile Vertical, we have our Saved List Clock here on the right, and we have our Weekly Top 10 IDs on the left. I can click and drag from the Library Maintenance into the clock this way. So we've scheduled number 8, so now I want number 7. I click the gray pointer box column for number 7, drag it across, and I have the solid red line to insert between these two elements. And I can do that with number six and five. I'll try that again with number five. Just remember when you do this, you want to make sure you're inserting with the solid red line as opposed to replacing with the box around the element. There's four. There we go. We've got all those elements scheduled. We'll maximize our clock so we can see it. And now we can go about inserting our other elements into this, such as our stop set indicators, our talk breaks, and so on. And when we have it all done, we're good to go, and we can just save that clock. It's our saved list clock. We've got our top 10 countdown. You can also use saved list as an example for scheduling an album side. I have clients that do that where they schedule an entire album. They just put that album's contents into a saved list and then schedule each element from the list one at a time into the clock. And they, for that, they'd use a session list. So maybe they do a Friday night album side, and then at 9 o'clock on Friday night, they go to that clock and off they go. Another cool function in clocks, we're going to do one again. Uh, actually, we're going to clone a clock. Let's do that. We're going to take Clock General, AA, and we're going to copy it. We'll call this clock MM for migrating. We'll open up the migrating clock, and you'll see right away it's the same thing as our clock AA, our general clock. What we'll do here is we're going to change some of the positions within this clock. I'm going to turn on our pie view as well here. I want to migrate our currents so that I don't always play a heavy current in this position, the medium here and the light here. 
I don't care which plays in either in any, in any of those positions, so long as the current plays in one, in each one of them. To do that, I'm going to change from a fixed position to a migrating position, and I'm going to let it pick from A, B, and C in that position in the clock. You'll notice right away at the bottom of the screen we have another window that is open. This is called the Flex Rules screen, and we can turn it on and off using the Edit Flex Rules button here at the top of our clock. I'm going to leave it turned off for the time being. We're also going to set this B position to a migrating position. amongst those three categories, and again for the C category position as well. We'll migrate there. So now, as I would said, we don't care what schedule's in these three positions, as long as it's from A, B, or C. With the flex rules, we can dictate how many from each of those categories can be used within those three migrating positions. Well, I only want one of A, one of B, and one of C in this hour. So I'll set my minimums per hour at 1. Additionally, I'll set my maximums per hour at 1. That way I don't by any chance get two A's and no C. You'll notice before we had that filled in, it was in red. It's because our max per hour is less than the total number used. Conversely, if we set this at 2 for our minimum, this is in red because we exceed the number used. We have four used, we have four minimally, but we're only using three positions. So your minimum has to add up to no more than the number used, and our maximum has to be at least the number used. For our demonstration purposes right now, we're just going to do one of each. So using the flex rules, we know we'll have an A, B, or C in each one of these three migrating positions in this clock without having more than one of each. When Joe Knapp takes the reins starting at 1 o'clock, this is one of the features he's going to demonstrate a little bit more in depth, because you can do a lot of cool things with migrating positions. As you see, we have other options here for maximum in a sweep, minimum separation, no segue permissions. We have some customers that like migrating positions so well, they migrate the whole clock. It gives a real cool element of surprise as to what's coming up next, eliminating that predictability that they're always going to play a current as the third song in the hour and so forth. There's our migrating clock. Lots of people do special sets, which uh, are the equivalency of doing two furs or three furs. I actually was on the phone uh, about an hour ago with a client who was setting up a three fur clock. The way we do that is using special sets in Music Master. And we're going to call this our clock 2F for two furs. So we'll start by scheduling a song out of our recurrence category. And now what we'd like to do is we'd like to have a second song scheduled based on the artist in that recurrence position. The way to do that is to use an element type of special set. In our special set position, we tell it to look at the song, in this case the previous song, any song. We could be more specific, telling it only look at music categories, only at non-music categories, and even which set pass we're going to go into. And that's something we'll leave for a later point. We're going to tell it we want to base this on our artist keywords. Artist keywords is what Music Master uses for artist separation. So if you're playing the Beatles, you would have keywords for Paul McCartney, John Lennon, and so on, in addition to the Beatles. So it would test against all five in that case, Beatles, McCartney, Lennon, Harrison, and Starr. We're going to leave it at first to any, that way we're going to say that the first keyword on the item that we're based off of has to match any of the keywords on the item we're scheduling in the special set position. In our category list, we'll click select and choose which categories we want this position to be scheduled from. We don't want a second recurrent, back-to-back -back recurrent, so we're only taking A, B, C, and then our golds. Furthermore, we can indicate the order in which we want it to attempt to fill this position. Right now it's going to go A's, then B's, then C's, and so forth. If we wanted it to try the primary golds first, we would drag and drop that to the top of the list. Depending on your Music Master version, you may be forced to use the up and down arrows, in which case you would click G2 here and then use the up arrow to move it into position. So now we're telling it, try a primary gold. If we can't find a primary gold that works, go after a heavy current. If you can't there, then go to the secondary gold. If not, then to medium currents and so forth. 
down below, we t can indicate where we wanted to use the rules from. If we wanted it to use, no matter which category it schedules from, rules from a specific one, we'd click the radio dial there. And in this case, whatever gets scheduled has to pass the rules of our heavy currents. More commonly, we tell it to use the rules from the category of whatever's tested. So if we're scheduling a G1 in this position, use the rules from the G1 category. If we're scheduling an A in this position, use the rules from A. We can also tell it to bypass the rules based on a target song field. Target song field in this case is artist keywords. If we left that unchecked, we would never get our position to schedule because it would be testing the artist separation rules. Thus, if you're asking it for two hours and ten minutes of separation between the same artist, you would never get them back to back. That's why we need to bypass the rules based on the target song field. Last item here is our special set scheduling pass. There are three of them available in scheduled properties. Why? Well, you could tell it that first off we want to schedule all of our music to first, pretty much right off the bat. Then, after we've scheduled all the music, we want a different special set scheduling pass for scheduling IDs and liners based on the music that's already been plotted. That would be special set scheduling pass two. And then we have a third one in case you have yet another item needed. We've got that set, click OK, and there we have our two for build. First song will come from Recurrent, our second one will be a G1, or an A, or a G2, and so on, until it finds one that works, based on the previous song's artist keyword. We can build a bunch of those real quickly, drop that in, come in here to Special Set once again. We're going to do the previous song's artist keywords, select our categories. organize them the way we want, and click OK. You can clone these items if you wish. Now we have a three for based off the primary gold, this being the first song with two more special sets after it, thus we get three in a row, or now four in a row. Assuming, of course, you can have four songs that have the same artist keyword as this primary gold song had. And you can rearrange the order in each of these special sets. So if this one, we don't mind it if it grabs from A, B, and C as well, we can add those in, and we can move them up into the list as well. Once again, we'll save our clock and move on to our next item, which is format lists. Now, some softwares have what's called uh, a linear clock or the ability to schedule based on a pattern. We build those patterns in format lists and I'll explain. We're going to call this our ABCD pattern. And here's why. We have this blank template here. We're going to add in elements so that we're going to schedule in a pattern. We're going to start with an A, then a B, then a C. Then we're going to go an A, then a B, then a D. Then we want it to repeat back at the top. We'll save that format list, and now let's build a clock that uses that. Click on the format clock icon, go to new, call this FL for format list. And let's start scheduling. We're going to start by dropping in a top of our ID. Click, drag, and drop it in. It's automatically a fixed position. Now we're going to schedule from our format list. Element type, format list. We only have one here so far. If we had multiple, we could choose which format list we wanted. We're going to go with the ABCD pattern, and we just wanted to import the next element out of that list. Click OK. Let's clone this a couple of times. So what Music Master is effectively going to do, and again, we're going to window and tile vertically so we can see this, is the item with the blue in the position is where we left off last time we used that format list. So this is going to start off with the first position in this list. So we're going to schedule an A, B, C, A, B, D, and then we're going to repeat the pattern, A, B, C. So now next time we go to use this list, it's going to start with this heavy current and schedule A, B, D, A, B, D. Cool thing about using format lists is that you aren't forced to stick only to that format list in your clock we can still go ahead and we can drop in our golds here. We want to put a gold there, tertiary in here, 
secondary right down here. So it will go A, B, C, gold, A, B, C, another, or A, B, D rather, gold, A, B, gold, C, and then repeat itself. Your format list itself can have various elements within it. Combo positions, fixed positions, which is what we're using here, forced, log notes, and so on. All of these are available within your format list. How you choose to use it is entirely up to you. And again, that's another item that Joe Knapp's going to go into more detail on during the next hour of our clocks presentation starting at 1 o'clock central. Notice when I clicked on the close icon, I had not saved it, so it asked, would we like to save our changes before we exit? We'll say yes. Last thing we're going to look at within our clocks is we're going to take that general clock we built is time markers. Use the pull down here in element type, go to time marker, and we can tell Music Master that we want to keep this hour between 59 and 61 minutes in length. When we have that amount of time scheduled, we want to reset the, the elapsed hour time to zero in this case. All you have to do to make this work is turn on the rule for hour timing in the rule tree. We could also do segment timing, which is handy if you're trying to meet the bottom of the hour. You can say that between the top and this specific point in the hour, we need 30 minutes. You do that using segment timing uh, elements in your clock. So there we have our hour timing element in this clock. Looks like our clock is going to be a little long, because that hour timing is not even going to hit till 105. So what it will mean is that when we go to schedule, we could see some unscheduled positions here because we couldn't meet the criteria based on our hour timing time marker element. But that's how it works. So we've gone over all of the different elements within the element type. Let's talk about some of these different position, different items we have within the clock itself. We've looked at the save icon. The one to the right of that is for printing. We can print out a clock. You can print the song elements only, the non-song elements, which would be your stop sets and log notes, traffic and breaks, etc. And you can even print that pie chart display that we've been seeing. If we want to do that, we just click Continue, select our printer, and OK. By default, Music Master prints to the screen first in a print preview or report viewer, which you should be seeing now once the screen removes from black. Here's what our clock looked like, the linear view of it. The little S's indicate those are the sweet marker elements in this hour. If we switch to the second page, you see your pie chart. Obviously, this looks really cool on a color printer, not so great on a black and white printer. We're not actually going to waste the paper on this at this point. We'll just exit out of it. The next icons are insert, clone, and delete elements. So if we wanted to insert an element ahead of this recurrent, we could use this icon right here. Or, like we've been doing during the rest of this presentation, right-click on the element and then select from those three items as well. We have insert, delete, and clone, just like we have insert, clone, and delete here. I'm going to skip over find and replace for just a moment and jump ahead to properties. When you're on an item, you can click the properties icon or double click on the details position of it. So we'll click that and we get the box that we've been seeing throughout the course of the presentation. There's three tabs here. The first one is your details. This is where you would select your categories. If it's a log note element, it's where you would enter in the break text for that element. If it's traffic position, it's where you'd enter your traffic merge points. Filters is used for doing just that. We can filter so that if we wanted to, we could say that this song, when it gets scheduled, has to be a female. Setting up a filter on there and then just clicking OK. We'll add that in and OK. Timing, we can indicate that a song is to be treated as a fill song. If we check that box, now it says, treat this as a fill song if the hour time has accumulated to at least X amount of time. We can tell it to do that for timing purposes only, show it as a fill, show it as an extra, or we can even tell Music Master to remove it from the log when you close that log after you're done editing it. We're not going to use that for this song because it's the first one in the hour. And then we have the Properties tab. The properties tab allows you to lock an element so it can't be edited. Hide it from exporting. This comes in really handy when you're using automation systems that require special syntax, we could have hidden the top of our legal ID. That way it wouldn't have confused our Scott Studio system since it's not written properly. 
You can hide an element from log reconciliation. That way, when you run reconciliation automatically in Music Master, it won't mess with that specific item if you've checked that box for the properties on that item. And you can hide it from printing as well. Transition codes are sometimes needed based on automation systems as well. If there's special coding that needs to be exported so that it, your automation knows what has to happen with this element, we can include that in the transition codes field here. Click OK, and you see we have a filter here. When I hover on it, a balloon pops up. This is song filter level 1, gender contains any of F. That means as long as we have the song filter level 1 rule turned on in our rule tree, this position will have to contain a gender F in order to pass the rule. We also see the stop set or sweep marker indicators, and then the other items that we would see here would be based on timing and whether or not elements are locked or hidden from exports. I'm going to remove the filter here and show you find and replace. Find and replace elements is a mass change function. What you can do is you can select an item within a clock, let's say in this case, talk break, and we can mass change all of our 30 second talk break elements to something else by clicking on find and replace. A note on find and replace, this is a mass changer. It cannot be undone short of going through and manually fixing it. So when you do this beforehand the first time, I would definitely recommend making a regular backup in Music Master so that in the event you messed it up by accident, you can get back to where you started from. What we're doing here is we're looking at all format clocks, and depending on the version of Music Master, you could be missing this clocks to change feature. This was new in 4.0 SR15, which is the one we're using in today's presentations. We're going to do this in all format clocks. We're going to take talk breaks of 30 seconds, and we're going to mass change them so that they now read Scott Studio Syntax. And when I click OK, it's going to go through all the clocks and change them, telling us Total clocks changed two. We had this in two different clocks, and it's changed a total of six elements. Click OK, and you see that all of our 30-second talk breaks are now in Scott Studio syntax. Because this clock is open, if we want to save that change, we would have to click the Save icon. However, the other clock that it made the change in, it's automatically done. There is no saving to be done there. So we've built clocks, gone through all the different details in clock editing. Let's talk about assignment grids. Assignment grids are used so that you can tell Music Master where you want those clocks to be placed during the course of a broadcast week. We come to the Assignment Grids tab and click New, and we'll call this Grid 1. If we check the box to create new copies of all assigned clocks, it would automatically duplicate each of the clocks we assign. We don't need to do that in this case. So for this grid, we're going to use a specific clock. We want to use the general clock. There it is. Or we could type that clock code in directly. Notice that they're both gray. Anything you click on turns white, as well as all of its matching elements, and then turns gray when you're not on a matching element of that type. We can go so far as we can populate an entire hour. Just click on that hour, and then select the clock you want to include there. So now we're going to do two first at eight. Or we could fill in the whole grid all at once by clicking and dragging all the way across and then selecting the clock. This is going to be all general clock at this point. Well, we built that really neat countdown hour. So let's do our countdown on Saturday, let's say at 7 p.m. And that was with our saved list. And we're going to repeat the countdown on Sunday at 10 a.m. And here I just typed it directly in. So now everything that is an A is in white, and if I click on the SL, now those are both in white. We can save this assignment grid. Would we like to make it active? We'll say yes. Now Music Master is going to use this grid when it goes to auto schedule a log. Let's build another assignment grid. We'll call it new. 
we'll call it grid two. Again, we will not copy the uh, clocks that are in there. This time, I'm going to populate it with clock AB. That was our secondary clock. And again, I'm going to put in our saved list clock on Saturday and Sunday. And since we built the two first clock, we're going to make a two for Tuesday here. And let's save that. Would we like to make this assignment grid active? Let's say no in this case. So now we just have a second grid. One more thing I want to do real quick is I'm going to build another clock for Christmas for demonstration purposes only. You'll notice that the length here is all going to be zero because I have nothing in the Christmas category. But now we've got 13 songs scheduled in that clock, so now I can go ahead and build an assignment grid for Christmas. Populate that whole thing, and we're not making this one active either. Why did I go through all that trouble? Well, so that I can show you the next cool thing in Music Master, and that's the format scheduler. Format scheduler is where you can go about setting up rotating assignment grids, and you can assign a specific grid to a specific date or week or time period. We're going to go into Data Set, Clocks, Format Scheduler. Here we are on Wednesday, February 11th. We're using Grid 1, and these are the clocks assigned to this date. If I wanted to, I could say, well, I'd like to do a 2 for 2 o'clock today, so I'm going to change this clock to Clocks twofers. Notice we have the clock icon here indicating this has been changed. It doesn't match what's on the assignment grid. You'll also notice that the date for the 11th is yellow. That also prompts us to know that something is different about that date. It does not follow what is in the assignment grid for that period. If we click the save icon, it'll pop, it'll save that, and then we will have that different change on the log for the 11th. We can also implement grid rotation. Down here under grid rotation, use the pull down and select grid 2. So now we have two grids in rotation. And when we click on a date, it will tell us what grid is in use. So we click on the 10th, grid 2 is in use. 17th, we're on grid 1. 26th is grid 2, and so on. Save that, now we will rotate grid after grid based on the grid rotation. Another feature within the this section, the format scheduler, is we can jump into the future, say into December, and what do you know about that? We've got some changes here made on December 26th and 27th. On the 26th, we're using grid 2. On the 27th, we're using grid 2. On the 25th, it's grid 1. Well, what do you know about that? Let's make a couple of other changes here. If we right-click on a date, we can remove the forced assignment grid from that date. And I can do that on the 27th as well. Additionally, I can assign a specific grid to an entire period of time. So if I right click on the 21st, we can assign a specific grid to that date or to that week. Well, being it's December and it's the week of Christmas, let's use our holiday grid here. So we've changed this. It's in yellow because it's not following our grid rotation. We've made that alteration here for the entire week. But I don't want to play Christmas music on the 26th or 27th. I want to go back to grid 1. So I will right click on the 26th. And I will assign a specific grid to that date, that being grid 1. And do the same thing on the 27th. So now we have that all set up for the holiday music scheduling for the week of Christmas. And on the 26th, it goes back to the grid 1 which is indicated here. Let's make that save. We have one last thing I'd like to show you here before we run out of time, and that is our log note text editor. If we go into data set clocks and log note text, we have a list of all the break notes or log notes that we've written thus far in Music Master. We have those commercial breaks and voice track elements for Scott Studios, the talk break, top of our legal ID. And this extra one here, Music Master Hour Double Due to Daylight Savings. You'll also get another one of those that says Hour Removed Due to Daylight Savings after we've hit the beginning of Daylight Savings Time. 
want to add something to the database of log notes, just click Add. And we can type in here that this is um, Live Promo. We can add in another one that says uh, News Break. When we click Save, it relists these in alphabetical order. So now we have those in there. If we need to remove something, we can just click the Delete button. When you delete an item out of the Log Note text editor, it removes it from all the clocks, all of your already scheduled logs, and everywhere else, and leaves it with just a blank line. So be careful before you delete items. We can also purge. Now, when you purge unused log notes, it removes them from this list forever, and there is no undo. You don't save it after you're done purging. It just happens automatically. If we run that now, it's going to remove the live promo and the news break. Click on purge and say yes. It tells us two log notes are gone, and you notice they have been removed from the list. That's our overview of clocks. I appreciate you joining in today. Hopefully you've gotten a lot of good information out of this, and I promise you you're going to get even more great information during the next hour when Joe Knapp takes the reins from us here in, in just a few minutes. And at this point, I'm going to turn things back over to Mark Bolke, and I appreciate it, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Paul. Great presentation on clocks in the uh, next hour will be uh, very informative for you guys who are existing users and those who will really want to see some advanced functionality. Uh, under clocks. What we like to do now is we'd like to take a five minute break um, or so so that uh, if you need to go get some water or take a run down the hall you certainly can do that. Once again some of the things we're trying to accomplish today are not only familiarize, uh, familiarize uh, our existing clients with um, some of the features in the background but also for a lot of new users out there who have not seen Music Master before and who may be uh, discussing a, a position with a Music Master station, uh, we want to try to bring you up to speed as quickly as possible. And if you secure a position with a, a Music Master client station, our training is very extensive. Yeah, we spend as much time as you need. Uh, you have a dedicated music scheduling consultant like Paul Zeno or somebody else on Jill Sorson's team who works with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to, to get you over the hump as quickly as possible and to support you in an ongoing basis. So it's not really a help desk mentality at Music Master. We really try to do hands-on, one-on-one support and training because if you know how to use the software, it certainly makes our life easier and yours as well. The next hour, uh, like Paul said, is going to be a detailed look with Joe Knapp on, on, on clocks, a little deeper look on some of the tips and tricks that you can use. Uh, we've got a lot of good questions that have come in via the question box and uh, we're trying to respond to those in a timely fashion uh, as we go here today. Uh, if you have a specific question that <clears throat> we don't answer now, we'll try to get back to you in an email form or a telephone call, uh, but by all means uh, ask questions as we go along. The next, uh, next week's session uh, on Wednesday, we'll start off at 11 a.m. Central Time with an introduction and an overview of the Music Master. It will be the same as we presented today in each uh, preceding week. But hour two, we'll get into a basic look at rules, um, just like uh, Paul Zeno did. It will be a basic um, overview from, you know, 10,000 feet or so. And then the, the third hour, starting at uh, 1 o'clock Central Time, will be a, uh, a detailed look at rules, how to apply them, and uh, goal scheduling uh, techniques that uh, are much more advanced. And uh, if you are a current Music Master client and user, this will be uh, one session you will definitely want to see because it will give you an opportunity to really fine tune your rules and have Music Master uh, work a lot more efficiently for you. If you've never seen Music Master, not a current user, uh, this will be an eye-opening experience for you as well. Uh, the, the, the capabilities within our rule tree and um, uh, uh, rule set within Music Master are, are very advanced compared, with many, compared to what many of you have used with other systems. So it's a real opportunity and will be very eye-opening next week for a lot of people, I'm sure. So we'll take, uh, I've got about two minutes left as I see it on our clock before we will uh, start again. So we'll just fill with a, a few more comments. Make sure that if you want to see next week's session or any succeeding session here, 
Make sure you go to our website and register for that. In advance, you must register for each each week. Um, we will have a be expanding that schedule. I think we have three or four weeks left on that schedule. We'll be expanding that list of uh, what we'll be offering in the very near future. So you'll see uh, those weeks pop up. Uh, you certainly can go in one session and uh, register for as many as of them as you like. We are uh, by request. We are recording these sessions. Unfortunately, the go to webinar. Um, software does not allow us to break these hours into individual hours, so the um, the recording of these uh, Wednesday sessions are going to be three hours in length. Um, but you can download them in case you uh, you want to repeat uh, performance of what you've heard here today and seen, or if you just like a another chance to. Um, uh, maybe you can't miss it. Maybe you've got a meeting or something else. This will give you a chance to come back later and take a look. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll wait just about uh, one more minute here. Uh, we want to welcome once again everybody who has joined us for the third hour uh, for the existing uh, class.